Hey guys, Nikolai here. Online video games are constantly adding new features to keep their games feeling new and fresh to all of their players. Sometimes though, these features get announced and they never actually come out. Or they existed for a while only to later disappear and never be heard of ever again. But before we get into these features that Riot Games has removed from League of Legends, this video is sponsored by Pro Guides. If you're looking to get better at League during the preseason and get a head start on Season 10, Pro Guides is what you need. Pro Guides offers everything you need to stay on top of your game, including constantly updating tier lists and, of course, their 24 7 high elo coaches. You can log on to Pro Guides today, select a coach, and start playing with a pro in no time. If that sounds good to you, then click the first link in the description to get started. Now with that being said, let's jump into the video. Starting with number 5, Challenger Rewards. At the closing of the 2016 ranked League of Legends season, Riot Games came out with physical rewards for players around the world who finished in Challenger, the highest rank in League of Legends. The first physical reward Riot created were these neat little medallions representing the player's achievements. Personally, I really like things like this, and in actuality, the medallion was only given to the top 10 players in each region. But the other 190 Challenger players were awarded with a challenger jacket. Which is cool in concept, but because of the material in which it's made of and the overall execution, they just look like a cheap bomber jacket with challenger printed on them. But let's not get hung up on that. In 2017, Riot Games raised the bar and awarded challenger players with a challenger backpack. I don't know why anyone would want this. Here's two scenarios. One, you're way past the days of wearing backpacks or two, you're in school, so you're constantly utilizing a backpack. But, go to school with a challenger backpack and don't be surprised if you're getting bullied. But okay, let's, let's move on. The bag was kind of lame, at least in my opinion. So in 2018, Riot came back to award their top players with another Timo. backpack. And not just another backpack, literally the same one, but this time in blue. Now, unfortunately for the gamers of 2019, this year Riot did not provide its top players with a red backpack. Instead, the League of Legends players received nothing. For multiple reasons, including difficulties with shipping so many rewards to so many different places in the world, Riot decided to retire this form of reward. As Riot said, quote, We've really enjoyed creating items honoring the players who reached this much sought after rank in these past three years. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. For season 2019 and onward, we will no longer be rewarding challenger players with a physical reward at the end of the season. Can you make me a jacket out of black trash bags that says silver on it? Now moving forward with number 4, the League of Legends and Google Pixel collaboration. A couple years ago in 2017, I was actually watching the live reveal presentation for the Google Pixel 2. And at one point, during their showcase of the phone's augmented reality capabilities, League of Legends appeared when I least expected it. We just it. talked about how the phone can help you understand the world, but it can also help you place things into the world. That's right, that's augmented reality. With League of Legends, you can watch one of the most popular eSport games on an AR map built by Grab Games. And with Lego, my favorite. Ever since then, I wondered what was that about and whatever happened to it? It's been over two years since this and neither party has ever said anything about it. Now, let me say this just in case you get the wrong idea. This looks horrible. Syndra and Ari are literally in the middle of the map T-posing. Now, the presenter did say that this is being made by a company called Grab Games. So I went on their website to see if I could find any updates. And although I couldn't find much, they do say they are officially partnered with both Google and Riot Games. However, for obvious reasons, it seems the League of Legends project didn't end up launching. But, they did get further into development on an augmented reality view for the ESL with CSGO Esports, with their description being a brand new way to experience your favorite esports. Essentially, they want you to point your phone onto a table 
and the phone will show you the battlefield on the table. Only problem is that it looks terrible and no one in their right mind would consume content like this. All jokes aside, I can see why this feature never came out. Now number three, the loading screen chat. This is a quickie, but I think interesting nonetheless. In the past, Riot has mentioned the possibility of a chat function being integrated into the loading screen before a match. Well, in November of 2018, Riot Games started testing this feature officially on the PBE. Riot's a separate server for testing things. This feature came combined with the first reveal of the new loading screen. Wait, I can hover over them? Wait, I can click them! Obviously, this feature is in the game today, but the chat isn't. Riot Meddler, design director on League of Legends, wrote a little piece about the loading screen chat back in June, and basically said that they simply shifted their priorities to something else. For number two, the rotating game modes. On March 7th, 2016, Riot Games announced the rotating game mode Q, which you're probably familiar with. This was Riot's way to bring unique game modes to the players all in one place on weekends. At first, this was very exciting. The queue came to feature games such as One for All, Doom Bots, Hexakill, Ascension, and many more. However, near the end of its life cycle, it felt like the only game modes popping up were Ascension and Legend of the Poro King. Together, these two game modes were featured for 32 weekends, despite not being anywhere near a fan favorite. And then, as the year progressed in 2018, it seemed that the rotating game modes would stop showing up. Additionally, the last creative game mode to really hang on, aside from Earth, was Nexus Blitz. This was actually a deeper project than any other rotating game mode, as it was actually getting patches and Riot clearly expressed that the game was in beta, meaning improvements were on the way. Reportedly, this game mode was meant to stick around, and I imagine it was supposed to take the place of what Twisted Treeline was. Unfortunately, the player base for Nexus Blitz wasn't that impressive. And to make matters worse for Nexus Blitz fans, later came out Teamfight Tactics, which was obviously miles more successful and eventually replaced that permanent slot that Nexus Blitz was holding. Here's a tweet from Riot Cactopus. Last week, we released this chart that shows how much more popular and sticky TFT is compared to other game modes. Everyone can see that Nexus Blitz's numbers were weak, but I'm seeing that some people are having a hard time accepting the data. So due to the falling popularity of Nexus Blitz, the game was removed and hasn't been seen ever again. And this wouldn't be that big of a deal on its own, but with the departure of Nexus Blitz, departed every rotating game mode, as we haven't had a new one since then. Oh, and also, speaking of data, someone asked Riot Cactopus how Twisted Treeland would compare on this graph. To which he replied, If we included Twisted Treeland on this chart, it would have basically been a flat line hugging the bottom of the graph, not even a heartbeat. Now for number one, one of the most controversial removals of content that Riot Games has ever done, the removal of the Legacy Cursor. On August 30th, 2019, Riot Games released the patch notes for patch 9.15. This patch was business as usual, but one thing stood out. Much like the beloved VHS player that you could no longer keep in your storage closet, we're removing the option to use the old bronze gauntlet from the game. This would go on to be the biggest mistake Riot could ever make. Gamers were outraged left and right. Petitions were made. Angry comments were sent. This guy tattooed the cursor on his leg. Uh, I, I don't know why. And after so much unexpected outrage, Riot backed down and decided to bring back the cursor. Although they did leave the old cursor gang a threat. On the new patch notes, they say that they're still planning on removing the cursor entirely in the future. So although the gamers won this battle, they might one day lose the war. <laughs>